So I guess I'll finally shut up about that handball now. Hello and welcome to HITC Sport. Here's my weekly review of the week and it's predominantly going to feature the Ireland-Denmark game, a match which made me want to vomit for 90 minutes. We've got to keep our composure! We've come too far! There's too much to lose! We've got to just keep our composure! Just a little brief excerpt from Martin O'Neill's halftime team talk, at least I assume so. I'm still trying to process just exactly what happened in Dublin last night. For half an hour it looked like Ireland were going to the World Cup. Book the flights, order the crates of Guinness because we're going to Russia. To, to get thrashed by teams who can actually pass the ball. And then, Jesus Christ. I don't want to kick players when they're down. Not that any of them will be stumbling on YouTube in Dublin Airport, but if somebody could lock Stephen Ward in the box and throw him into the River Liffey, that would be very much appreciated. Just to be clear, no, I'm not actually advocating murder, so you, you can't get me on that. But at the end of the day, it was embarrassing. Christian Eriksen was afforded the freedom of Dublin Ford to score a hat-trick. Good lad Martin in replacing our two defensive midfielders with Wes Hoolan and fresh air. Probably Martin O'Neill's worst decision in football since he decided to sign Danny Graham. Cyrus Christie demonstrated just why Neil Taylor should have received a prison sentence for forcing us to play him. Half the players looked as if they'd been locked in a pub the previous night. And just to rub salt into the wounds, Lord Nicholas Bentner scored a penalty to make it five. It would have been less humiliating if they just got one of the mascots to take the penalty. Then again, the tragic thing is he'd probably start for us. See, that's where the underlying problem is. We haven't qualified for a World Cup in 15 years. Back when I was a child with prospects of a career in journalism and, and wasn't forced to shout into a camera for a living. But is it any wonder when you look at the players we have. When Spain knocked us out in 2002, we had a handful of Champions League regulars. Now we have Daryl Murphy. Our second striker is Shane Long, a man who I wouldn't even trust to pour a glass of milk these days, never mind get a shot on target. The last time he scored for Ireland, Leicester City were champions, Obama was still president, and we didn't have any subscribers. You still don't! Hey, you be quiet. Aidan McGiddy's nearly got 100 caps. He's about as much use as a wet sock these days. We're still calling up Paul McShane, a man who should have been killed for crimes against football years ago. Jeez, I'm in a bit of a murderous mood today. I right, don't take what I'm saying too literally, alright? Actually, it's Paul McShane. Do it, yeah, if it's Paul McShane, do what you want. Our best player barely makes it off West Brom's bench nowadays, and our most talented one is nearly as old as time itself. We're a group of players that has heart, but as long as we're still calling up Shane Long, we're going nowhere fast, except maybe to the pub. But I still I want to say fair play to the lads, the fact that they managed to get to a playoff, and to the Euros a couple of years ago, is a great achievement. Considering that Martin O'Neill is basically trying to drive a car with wooden wheels, I'm really bad at car analogies. Look, on the bright side, we might get to the Qatar World Cup, and then all completely melt to death in the heat, and have Desert Vultures feast on our alcohol-soaked bodies. So we've that to look forward to. Great. There were some international games, like England had a couple of goalless friendlies. Who gives a sh Calling up the likes of Lewis Cook, Dominic Solanke, and Angus Gunn. I, I don't... I, Northern Ireland got dumped out by a dodgy refereeing decision. I remember those days. And Italy quickly realised that he won't score any gold by playing Gabbiadini up front. Well, the Southampton fans could have told you that. Wouldn't you hate to be a Neymar? The man has about 15 cameras on him at any given time. Can't even nip out to Asda without getting asked for about a billion selfies. Welcome to my world. No, that's a, that's a lie. Not even my mother gives a sh** who I am. Then again, if I was Neymar, I'd be comfortably set up for life. I have millions in the bank. I wouldn't have to rummage through my neighbor's bin for food. Gravy night is the worst. The pressure seems to have gotten to him these days. It always seemed a bit odd that he decided to sign for PSG. A club who he pretty much helped bully into oblivion last season. Punching six goals past him at the new camp. It was a bit like when a young, attractive woman leaves her similarly attractive boyfriend for a short chubby old man constantly smelling of weak old cheese who just happens to have a bank account the size of Manchester. Alright I'm doing PSG at the service there. Paris is a beautiful city but their collapse at the new camp was embarrassing. Even though I can't really say anything about embarrassing collapses this week I mean this is can't escape it. You would have thought the owners might have wanted to shut out for a couple of defenders who could cope under pressure, rather than splash 200 million on another forward. So here we are, Neymar has been in France for barely three months and he's already whinging. What's, what's wrong with him? Is his golden watch too tight? Are his butlers speaking out of turn? Is his wallet too small for his ginormous checks? Neymar is not a kid, he's a 25 year old man, with enough money to invade Poland if he so wished. So what's wrong with him? The stories are saying that he's already regretting leaving Barcelona. The French league is the one that everyone tries to get away from to advance their careers. It's a full of misfits of lads trying to get their failing careers back on track. For God's sake, Florian Tolvan looks like a superstar over there, when in Newcastle he concentrated more on fixing his quiff than he did on tracking his runner. Basically Neymar is upset because the media fabricated stories about him having rows with Cavani and the manager, when he inevitably gets bored of scoring against Dion and Sant Etienne in about six weeks time. I wouldn't be surprised if he does end up at Real Madrid. Just watch out for those pig heads. In terms of the Premier League, not much has happened recently. Slavin Bilic finally got the boot, and as if having two useless Davids at one club wasn't enough, West Ham have got out and got Moyes. You know, the fellow who spent the last five years destroying football clubs and threatening to smack women. Now on one hand, he might instill a bit of discipline into the squad and remind the West Ham defenders that they're actually able to clear the f 
in ball. He might be promised a war chest of funds in January, and the club might be able to sign some players to haul them out of trouble. On the other hand, it'll probably go to the end of the winter transfer window, and they'll have brought in Lescott, Oviedo, and the Kosovan Jack Grealish. Moyes has gone about assembling a genius backroom staff, drafting in Stuart Pearce, uh, the fellow whose tactical genius consisted of sticking goalkeepers up front, and Alan Irvine, the guy who lasted about 15 seconds at West Brom before he was kindly asked to leave. I'll be in there, am I right? Everton are still on the hunt for a new boss, and have earmarked every man and his grandmother as potential successors. Diego Simeone was a name that popped up a few days ago. Atletico Madrid have not stopped laughing since. They've also tried to get Marco Silva. He's been at Watford for about 10 minutes. Sean Dyche. He hasn't cleared his throat for about 5 years. And Sam Allardyce. A man who must really hate the sight of his wife, considering he's had about 7 job interviews since he retired 6 months ago. Anyway, cheers for watching that. It was a bit of a short one. Nothing really happened in the world of football except... Obviously the Ireland result, which I needed to get off my chest. So tell me what you think if you want to have a good old laugh at my expense, just... Anyway, cheers for watching guys, don't forget to like, share and subscribe, and as always, I'll talk to you in a while.